Hello, we're the History Hikers. I'm Dries. And I'm Jente. And we are standing in front of the Chateau de Nel or Nesles or Nesle, uh, something like that. Um, it's looking pretty fancy from here. Um, the donjon is detached from the castle, which is unusual. Um, okay. Yeah, well, this castle is built by the parents of the one that built the last castle we saw in Ferrantardinois. It's all one big family gathering here. We're not too far from Fer the Antardinois either, so uh, yeah, let's check it out. The remains of the castle of Nel are located in the commune of Serain-Genel in the Anne department and the region Haute de France. It is located next to the Rue de Pont Brûlé, a tributary of the river Ourc. The name Nel probably derives from the Gallic Novio, meaning new, and Ialo, meaning clearing. Where's our new companion? Hi. The latest history hiker to join the team. Vaulted ceilings. Yeah, it's living from the floor. Hopefully it will be visible on video. Yeah. Shape. Maybe that was the vault from the basement. This is latrine, so I believe the ground level would have been somewhere over here. Yeah. So that would indicate to me that there was a vault in the basement. The history of Nel follows the same beginning as in Fer en Tardenois, which we visited in last week's video. Check the description or the card in the top right to find out more. They are ancient Merovingian possessions that passed to the Archbishop of Reims and eventually to Robert de Dreux, brother of King Louis VII of France. His son, Robert II, built the castle of Fer en Tardenois at the turn of the 12th century, and his grandson, Robert III, Count of Dreux, and Brain, built a fortified house in Nel in 1226, as attested by the building pyramid given by Count Thibault of Champagne. For its construction, the Count of Dreux took the royal castle of Dourdan as a model, built for Philippe Auguste a few years earlier. It is one of the most perfect examples remaining in France of the military architecture of this time, known as Philippienne. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. The castle used to be entirely surrounded by water, the wet moat and marshland form a natural defense and access to the castle was only possible via a wooden drawbridge. Interestingly, the donjon is separate from the castle. You have to walk across a separate bridge from the courtyard to access it. Now private property, and they've been using it mostly as a farm, I think. Yeah. <laughs> tractor. There's a very medieval tractor. The old ox is in the stable. In 1280, Nell entered the powerful house of Châtillon by the marriage of Isabeau de Dreux with the famous Gaucher V de Châtillon 
who was constable of France under five successive kings. Their descendants ceded it around 1370 to Jean II de la Personne, Viscount of Assy. During the Hundred Years' War, the castle, along with the castle at Fer, were some of the last castles in northern France to resist the English. Nel was besieged by the English for nearly three years before it had to surrender. The act of surrender to the Earl of Salisbury has been preserved and is kept in the Bibliothèque Nationale. We now enter some of the juiciest parts of the history of the castle. It's a real soap opera. In 1435, the 4 year old Guillaume de Flavie became the Lord of Nel after marrying the young heiress of the Viscounts of Assy, Blanche, who was at that time only 10 years old. A fierce and unscrupulous man of war, Guillaume swore no allegiance to king nor country. His most notable atrocity is when he seized the French Marshal Pierre de Rieux who died in the castle after nine months of captivity. Here we can see a tree of all the owners that owned the castle through the ages. We are very thankful to the current owners who are very kind and provided us access to the castle and with the documentation with which we were able to give you this historical overview. Being modelled after the royal castle at Dourdan, the castle of Nel follows the same pattern. It's a perfect square flanked by eight cylindrical towers and an impressive donjon or keep. Beautiful windows. When she was 20, Blanche fell in love with Pierre de Louvain, a young officer from Soissons. Blanche had her husband murdered before her eyes by the barber in the chamber on the first floor of the donjon. Despite the scandal of the whole affair, Blanche and Pierre got married only a few weeks after the murder. After 15 years of marriage, fate caught up with them when the brothers of Guillaume de Flavie assassinated Pierre. The red brick manor was constructed in the 15th century. Only the first floor has survived. It has beautiful Gothic windows and monumental fireplaces. Again with the beautiful windows. The story does not end there, because Blanche remarried a third time with Pierre Puy, master of the request to the parliament. He too, however, was hounded. The sons of de Louvain and the brothers of Flavie joined forces to shut Pierre Puy in a cage of the dungeon. He was released, only to be denounced as a traitor to the French king. The castle's history then experienced a brief lull with the next couple of owners. It was at this time that the new seigneurial dwelling was built.
We rejoin the history of Ferrand Tardenois when in 1529 Nel was bought by Constable Anne de Montmorency, who already owned the castle of Fer. It's in 1568, during the religious wars, that the castle was dismantled after it had become home to the Huguenots. The castle lost its roofs, battlements and top floors. The buildings subsequently were converted into farm buildings. The castle of Nell was occupied by the Germans during World War I and on July the 31st, 1918, after three days of heavy fighting, liberated by the Americans of the 42nd US Rainbow Division, commanded by none other than Colonel Douglas MacArthur. The important American military cemetery, Waze N, one kilometer from the castle, is a harrowing testimony to the violence of these fights. That was the Chateau de Nesle, or Nel? Not sure. <laughs> I don't speak French. Um, yeah, not kind of fancy. Uh, the donjon was uh, rather fancy as well to be able to climb all the way to the top. Yeah, and um, actually walk on the summit as well. Yeah, so extra points. And those extra points are needed for the arbitrary... Subjective. Castle score. And I'm gonna go for... Uh, seven. Yeah, we got a little plan with information about the castle. We were able to see pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, it's quite enjoyable. What do you think? Uh, since I gave the last one a seven, I'm going to give this one a seven and a half because it's very neatly kept. Uh, the current owners are descendant of a long line of owners since the Middle Ages, so everything has always been kept and restored very nicely. Mm. It was also quite funny to see like uh, tractors and everything, but it is historically because since the 16th century this has been mostly used for agriculture. Yeah. So yeah. Seven um, and a half and a seven. Definitely check it out if you're in the area. Uh, we're the History Hikers. Thank you so much for watching and supporting us. And give us stuff. Like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff if you have enjoyed watching this video. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.